the great powerful word, word coming forth from Prophet David. And we're so glad that you're here tonight. We miss you. Um, for those, if this is your first time here, please make sure um, to download the Church Center app um, for upcoming events, giving, and um, for small groups, um, be sure to download the Church Center app to keep up to date it. Uh, update it. <laughs> and please make sure that you do choose um, the Citadel as your church location because other churches use the same app as well. Um, and I want to um, encourage you that um, we have pre service prayer uh, all the time before church. We have church um, from 6 to 6 30 p.m can just come out and just be in prayer and agreement, expecting God to move. Um, we also have morning prayer every weekday morning um, between 5.30 a.m. and 6.30 a.m. Um, and we do it through Zoom. Again, it's through the app. If you get on there, this is what it looks like, the early morning prayer. Um, you get on Zoom. You don't have to turn on your camera if you don't want to. Um, it's so early in the morning. Everybody's doing different things at 5.30 some of us are getting dressed, some of us are still in bed, some of us are already working. So we just want to encourage you to come and be a part from 5.30 to 6. Um, we have a time of soaking where we just play um, music and it's been really good, really powerful. And you can just um, soak in the presence of God. And then at 6, between 6 and 6.30, we pray. We pray for our city, we pray for our, our church, we pray for our families. And any, anything God leads us, that's how we pray. So um, and we're just going to encourage you to please come and be a part. Um, God is moving. God is answering prayers. Yes. And if you have any questions, you can ask me. I can help you. Um, again, go on the Church Center app and um, go to join a, a group. And it's going to look like that, early morning prayer. Um, our upcoming speakers, March 2nd and March 9th, it's going to be our prophet John Harkey. So please invite your friends, your neighbors, your co-workers, your family, whoever and whoever God puts on your heart to invite so that we can pack the house. I mean, he is such a great speaker. Um, every time he preaches, it just it hits home. And, you know, it stirs you, it stirs you for, to want to know more of the Lord and, and more hunger and, and create some uh, hunger and a thirst for more of God. So you don't want to miss it. And now I'm going to invite my sister Catalina. She's going to go ahead and do the offering. Hello. So we have several ways to give. You can text the dollar amount to 84321, or you can go online to the Citadel um, that church and give there, or the ch church center app. You can also, there's a little a link to click there. If you need um, an envelope for check or cash, you can raise your hand and our ushers will come around and give it to you. Um, today I want to read from Deuteronomy 8. I'm going to need you to bear with me because it's quite a lot. So it says, be careful to follow every command I'm giving you today so that you may live and increase and may enter and possess the land the Lord promised an oath to your ancestors. Remember how the Lord your God led you all the way in the wilderness these 40 years to humble and test you in order to know what was in your heart, whether or not you would keep his commands. He humbled you, causing you to hunger and then feeding you with manna, which neither you nor your ancestors has known, to teach you that man does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. Your clothes did not wear out, and your feet did not swell during these 40 years. Know then in your heart that as a man um, disciplines his son, so the Lord your God disciplines you. Observe the commands of the Lord your God, walking in obedience to him and revering him. Yes. For the Lord your God is bringing you into a good land, yes. a land with brooks, streams, yes. and deep springs gushing out into the valleys and hills, a land with wheat and barley, vines and fig trees, pomegranates, olive oil, and honey, wow. a land where bread will not be scarce, and you will lack nothing, a land where rock, the rocks are iron, and you can dig copper out of the hills. When you have eaten and are satisfied, praise the Lord your God for the good land he has given you. Be careful that you do not forget the Lord your God. 
failing to absorb, observe his commands, his laws, and his decrees that I am giving you this day. Otherwise, when you eat and are satisfied, when you build fine houses and settle down, and when your herds and flocks grow large and your silver and your gold increase, and all you have is multiplied, then your heart will become proud and you will forget the Lord your God who brought you out of Egypt, yeah. out of the land of slavery. That's right. He led you through the vast and dreadful wilderness, that thirsty and waterless land with its venomous snakes and scorpions. He brought you water out of a hard rock. He gave you manna to eat in the wilderness, something your ancestors had never known, to humble and to test you so that in the end it might go well with you. You may say to yourself, my power and my strength of my hands have produced this wealth for me. But remember the Lord your God, for it is He who gives you the ability to produce wealth. And so confirms His covenant, which He swore to your ancestors, as it is today. If you ever forget the Lord your God, and follow other gods, and worship and bow down to them, I testify against you today that you will surely be destroyed. Like the nations the Lord destroyed before you, yeah. So you will be destroyed for not obeying the Lord, your God. Okay. So I was originally just going to read one of the scriptures that says he gives us the ability to create wealth. But I, when I read the whole thing, I was like, oh my gosh, that's so good. Um, but in Luke, it says, if you are faithful in the little, you will be faithful in the big. So we are little right now, but this is where our faith is to be, show, to be shown to God yes. that we can be trusted with a little. 10%? That's nothing. That's nothing. God has given us the ability to create the wealth that we have. Yes. Our jobs are not on our own. Our jobs, God has opened the door for our jobs, for our provision. So even though we're working for our money, He made a way yes. to, to be in that position that we are in the first place. This position comes from God. So the least we can do is give our 10%. That's that's the least we can do to bless God mm -hmm. and with a grateful heart. Yes. And the Bible says, when you do this in obedience, uh -huh. see that I will not open the windows of heaven and pour right. so many blessings you don't have room enough to contain. Yes. So that's all we have to do. So today, I just, let's put our faith into action. Let's put works behind our faith today and let's see the windows of heaven open up and let's be obedient in the little today so that way tomorrow and our future generations will have much that they cannot contain. Amen? So let's go ahead and pray. Lord Jesus, I just thank you, Father, that you don't need our money, Lord Jesus. You don't need our help. The earth is your footstool, Lord Jesus. I thank you that you have given us an opportunity to bless you with our hearts and put you above our, our money and our finances, Lord Jesus. We humble ourselves before you tonight, God, and we give you what we need to give you in obedience, Lord Jesus. I pray that you would see our hearts and it would be a sweet incense to you, that you would be blessed by the Citadel Church tonight, Lord. And I thank you that this is the, the beginning and that though it may be small right now, I thank you that we're not gonna have enough room to contain your blessings because of the promises that you have not only promised us, but our ancestors, Lord. I thank you that you are not a man that you should lie or a son of man that you should forget, Lord Jesus, or change your mind. Father, I just, I just speak that now into every home. I speak blessings into every home. I come against any kind of doubt or worry, fear, or anxiety. I speak with provision and blessings and open doors this night in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, also, if the kids could go ahead and line up at the door so we can be dismissed. And I would like to invite our very own Prophet David. Amen. Man, y'all looking good. Let's just extend our hands to the children as they're going to children's church. Father, I thank you so much that these children are the future, Father God. They are children that have been chosen by you. Father, as much as we're going to do as a generation, Father, we charge them now that they're going to do double, triple, a hundredfold of what we could ever accomplish. Father, we speak right now over our children, a hedge of protection. Father, I say right now that even the environment that they're in, Father, that the anointing would fall on them like Samuel. Father, right now that the word of the Lord would go before them and would begin to make the path straight. So, Father, we bless our children. 
We say it right now. We prophesy for their future in yes. Jesus' name. If you believe it, say amen. 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 Well, I am super excited to be able to be here with you guys because first off, Tucson is one of my favorite places. Tucson has some of my favorite people, and it also has some of my favorite tacos in the world. So listen, we get that rollies, we get that tacos of song, we're doing that whole thing, right? Uh, you know, and, and so I, I'm okay. You know, every all of my taco shop owners were happy to see me. They're like, oh, Chino, you're here, what up? You know, so I was like, ah, oh, yeah, that's me. Come on, bring it in, you know? Um, so it's been really good, and, and I love the fact that whenever I come here, Whenever I come here, that there's nothing different in terms of this place versus any other place in America. And it's in this context. It's that wherever you are in this city, God has a now word and has a now season for every single person within it. And so one of the first things that I really want to encourage you tonight is that you are not an exception to God's favor and you're not an exception to his will and his heart for this city and for your personal life. I immediately when I walked in here, the first thing that I kept sensing was that there were many of us because of this season that we've come through, some of the shaking, some of the intensity, all of the things that have been happening, we thought that we were the exception. We thought that maybe the Lord had moved on because we had missed our window of opportunity. And I wanna tell you this, is that no one can miss their window of opportunity if they ask the Lord to help them in their time of need, to say, Lord, I may have screwed up. God, I may not have had the right heart. I may have acted crazy. I may have laid hands in the wrong way on some people. I might have done some things that I am not proud of, but I need you now to bring me out of a place of delay, to bring me out of a place where the enemy is now mounted around about me, and I have nowhere to go. Some of you in here, immediately when I walked in, God showed me that some of you were surrounded on every side. Some of you had the enemy encamped around you, and what's happening right now is the mind game. What's happening right now, and how many of you remember the story of David where all of a sudden Goliath comes out into the valley, and what happens is that Goliath begins to speak, right? He begins to use his words to form the mindset of the Hebrew nation. And what happens is that because their mind began to be shaped around the words of Goliath, a spirit of fear came on them where not a single man was able to stand against Goliath. Now, here's the thing. This is not logical, okay? Because if one man comes out there and is like, listen, I challenge you to a duel, right? Logic says if you don't want to participate in a one-on-one -on -one battle, you have about 5,000 archers in your army. You could choose not to participate, and you could just kill Goliath using archers. But you see, the spirit of fear, when it grabs a hold of your mind, what happens is that you are unable to make logical decisions. And you begin to play in a battlefield that is the making of the enemy and not necessarily the one that God wants you to engage in. And so how do we break through that? Tonight, I, I just wanted to share with you, why is it that we, we find ourselves in these moments where we're surrounded all around us? Why is it that there are moments where the enemy seems to come up from all different directions and says things to your very heart that hits you in all of the right places? Yes. Hits you in the midst of your family, in the midst of your circumstances, your resources, your job, even where the enemy begins to speak on the brokenness that he caused in your soul at the very beginning. Yes. Yes. Where he began to leverage the trauma of what he had done to you in the past to get you to self-destruct now. Yes. How many of you know that the enemy doesn't play fair? Yes. And oftentimes, and you've heard me teach this, is that there are a lot of situations where there is a battle that you are engaged in right now that did not start with you. In fact, it started many generations before you got here. How many of you know about generational trauma, transference, all of those different things? There are things that you are mad about that didn't even happen to you. 
but they happen to your mama's mama, to your great grandma's mama, to your grandfather. And, and I know this because I grew up, my, my family comes from China, Southeast Asia, different places like that, okay? And you know what? For a while there, I was mad at Japanese people because of World War II. But how many of you know, I am not, I was not around World War II. I wasn't fighting in a war. I, I wasn't out there storming the beaches of Normandy. I wasn't doing any of that. But here's the thing is that many of you fight battles in your life. That you say, God, it feels so unfair because it did not have anything to do with me. And now I feel like the odds are stacked against me. I don't know how I'm going to get up. I don't know how I'm going to get over. I don't know if I'm ever going to be able to get through and what happens is that you come to church, you come in with a smile on your face. I do this too. You come in saying everything is okay. Everything is, is I'm going to make it through. You say the right things, but the position of your heart is stuck. But you're afraid that if you share what you have and what you're going through, the brokenness on the inside of you, if you show anything except for strength. That then maybe everything the enemy has said about you is true. And I am here to tell you right now that in this season, what we have to be willing to do is we have to be willing to step outside of the game plan and the world that the enemy has trying to shape around you to make you think that there is no hope. And I'm telling you that not only is there hope, but there is a guarantee of victory. Amen. There is a guarantee that if you, in this season, recognize the position that God has put you in right now, not 10 years ago, not five years ago, not what happened with your parents, not how it happened with your children, but right now, in this moment, there is a word from God that wants to be released in the midst of your life that can change everything. It can shift the entire atmosphere of where you are, where God doesn't have to abide by the rules of your past. But he says that that which the enemy has tried to do in your life, I am here to shift it. But I need a man or a woman to partner with me to do it. So you right now in this season, in this most amazing, incredible time where the world is shaking and recession is here and political lines and divides are being drawn. You right now are a precious people identified in the city, identified in this state. And God says, I'm looking for someone that will get a vision of what I want to do in their life so that I can cause them to be a sign and a wonder. So my word to you tonight is that God wants to make you a sign and a wonder. God wants to shift you from everything that has tried to plague you in this season to begin to position you not as a victim, but as a champion. And if I was talking to you one-on-one, -on -one, just David, me, and you, I'm going to tell you the truth, that if we were really honest with ourselves, some of us feel the exact opposite of what a champion should, should feel like. Right. But I'm telling you that regardless of what you feel, yeah. the word of the Lord is that he's looking to make you into a champion. So just raise your hands up right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, I cancel out every lie of the enemy that has tried to come in this season, that has tried to rob your people of, of seeing their identity, of seeing their purpose, and what you have placed in the midst of their life. Father, I declare now every assault of the enemy on their mind, we break it now in Jesus' name. We shift that out of them. We command it to not plague their thoughts any longer and father right now and, and if you you agree with this part just agree in your heart and agree with your words father I say right now I repent yes. where I have not done the work that was necessary to renew my mind with your word Father, I know that as much as your grace covers, as much as you are doing a prophetic thing in this season, you have were very clear with your command that we are to renew our mind with your word so father right now i say that the key in this season is that we shut the mouth of the enemy 
But Father, we rebuild the walls of knowing what your word says so that we can wage a good warfare. I just sense that so strong is that one of the first things that the enemy does is he gets you to stop studying and looking at the very thing that God has written on paper to tell you your inheritance. Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, there are some of us in here we have not cracked open a Bible in quite some time. And God, it is not condemnation, but Father, I know it's an invitation. So Father, right now, we make a commitment that we will renew our mind with what you say. Father, that as you have beat back the enemy from our life, Father, we do our part in being, in being studious and being able to establish our mind to think your thoughts. If you believe it, say amen. amen. So the key that I want to give you is this, is that one of the ways that the enemy begins to mount up around you and tries to make you feel lost is that what happens is that many times we do not understand the season or the stage that we are in in terms of our prophetic process. And I want you to know that when you do not know where you are, when you do not know the context of your situation, it is very easy for things to lie to you. Not just the enemy, but our own selves. And it can cause us to begin to hear what we think is the voice of God. But in reality, it's just a close approximation of what we think God's voice would sound like, but not actually is. Many times when you are lost in the midst of where you are, you settle for inferior alternatives to what God has said. Rather than knowing the season you're in to step through the narrow place, to go to a place that you've never been. The scripture that I want to share with you guys tonight is actually found in the book of Exodus and it's found in the book of Numbers. And it is the story of the, story of the children of Israel that moved from Egypt into the wilderness. But the purpose for all of this, how many of you know that God doesn't bring you into a wilderness to let you die? God doesn't bring you in the midst of where you are to just simply leave you there or think or, or to play fun games with you and to see how long you will last. What happens is that there is a process in God in which he brings you into bondage into freedom. But it is not simply a journey where you go from the bondage of Egypt, where people are eating your lunch, where they're taking your children and they're killing their futures and all of these different things. It is not just setting you free from the bondage of Egypt that tries to bind you from your personal breakthrough. But the process of Egypt to the wilderness is for the purpose of bringing you into promise. And I want to tell you that tonight, right now, what is happening for many of us is that God wants to move you from a place of freedom to a place of promise. Now, here's the thing is that it is one of the most difficult things that any believer can do is to move from a place where you have what God has given you as your personal inheritance and you put it all on red. You all put it like you're standing at the blackjack table and you put all your chips on the fact that there's more. And I want to tell you that for many of us right now, we find ourselves being buffeted and resisted in the narrow place where God is saying, listen, I've given you more than enough of what you need. I have taken you from a place of Egypt. I've taken you into the wilderness where, yes, you do not have your taskmasters, your slave masters. You do not have the backbreaking labor of your past. What you have in the wilderness is me and the revelation of who I am as your sovereign God, as your almighty creator that will provide for you in the midst of where you are. But here's the thing is that 90% of believers, I made that number up because I don't have the stats on them. <laughs> but the majority of believers die in the wilderness. Yes, right. Absolutely. Because they're trying to preserve what they have. Mm -hmm. Exodus 
Exodus is a very interesting uh, scripture. Exodus chapter 16 is that the children of Israel are complaining, we don't have food, and, and they're arguing about things that make no sense. Because they had entered into a place of freedom. They didn't have freedom. Every single thing that they have need of has always been provided. And yet there is something in the heart of the Israelite people that is desires to complain. And so what happens is they come up and be like, yo, we ain't got no food, blah, 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 blah. you know, blah, blah, blah. roll these with clothes on Tuesdays, you know, all that stuff, right? <laughs> so we got that whole thing going on. And so Moses cries out to God, God responds and gives them manna in the morning and quail at night. It is the first, one of the first examples of Uber Eats and DoorDash you ever see. <laughs> and yet, so get this, they didn't, God didn't want a tip, God didn't want anything, God never got lost in delivering your food, okay? God never got, forgot the silverware and you had to eat with your hands, right? God, God didn't do any of that. Right in the midst of where you are, or in the midst of the Israelites, boom, food right there. But there's one command, and we all know the command. Is Moses said to them, let no man, this is verse 19, let no man leave any of it until morning. Take what God gives you for the day. And this is something that is very interesting, is that what God is teaching the Israelites here, I don't have time to go into an in-depth thing about this, but he's teaching them to take their eyes off of the past and turn their focus on the present. Yes. Only take what you need for today. In fact, in that stage, he doesn't even have them look to the future. Because one of the things that will rob us in this season is that we become so preoccupied with what happened before that we fail to recognize the provision today. Now here's what happens, is that when we do this, we essentially stand in front of God and say, you're not enough. <laughs> so let me ask you, if we as believers look to a past that yes was unfair, yes was not correct, yes people moved and did things that were incorrect to us, but when we focus on it every second, that we focus on it, could it be that we are standing further and further opposite to the promise that God is trying to bring us into? Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, we repent for all of the areas in our life, God, where we became so enamored with our past that we failed to see what was happening today. Right now, in this moment, and in Jesus' name. And here's the interesting thing is that he says, do not take more than what you need today. But of course, there's always that do in the camp. <laughs> but they did not listen to Moses and some left part of it until morning. And it bred worms and became foul. And Moses was angry with them. I want to tell you this, is that scarcity will make you do crazy things. You see, in the midst of where God is getting you to focus on today, to take your eyes off of where you have been, to our present, what he needs to do is he needs to build faith inside of us that he is more than enough to provide for us. But even more than this, he is more than enough to provide for us without us trying to put our hands in what he's cooking in the kitchen. Okay? Because this is something that's so interesting, is that the Israelites don't even know where this stuff is coming from. But they got feedback. They got ideas about how God could do it better. They have all of these different things. They decided to revolutionize food storage techniques. Man, they just don't have the right Tupperware. Maybe if we put it in this thing, Man, you know, see, you don't got that Pyrex. You got that hefty stuff. You need, you need glass containers with a vacuum seal. That's what you need, God. Come on, let's get with the technology, right? But what you have to see is that the Israelites 
are bound with the idea that God does not have the capacity to fulfill what he says. And so the reason why some of us in this season, can I define what this looks like for some of us? Some of us right now, we go to the, we, we go into worship, we go into pray, we go into church, and we do all of the things that we know to do, but it feels different. Some of us, it feels like it's gone stale. Some of us feel like rather than getting better, we're getting more bitter. As if we're eating manna that has spoiled. You can see it all around you, churches in, in all across this nation. I was just at a bunch of churches over the last few months, and you see people in the same meeting. Some are getting touched, and others are noshing on the manna that has long since spoiled. Because this is what happens with human nature. Is that we are more than happy to sacrifice the future we cannot see. For the rotten manna of a time gone by. That could have been amazing. Was awesome in the time that it happened. But God has never provided for you so you can stand still. He has provided things in your past. He has touched you. He has met you. He has given you prophetic words. He's given you prophecies. He's done all of these things for you because he loves you. But he cannot bless old manna. He cannot satisfy us in the midst of where we feel comfortable because he knows that it will kill us in the long run. Because you were never built to survive. You were built for promise. You were built from the very beginning where everybody tried to come against you. Situations were not fair, but God said, I have placed a promise on you. And now is the time for you to move forward. And so one of the things that we have to see is that if we are seeing where we're coming to church, we're having amazing worship, how many of you, how many of you just appreciated uh, Kevin leading worship this, what, this evening? I mean, my goodness, I, I will tell you this, I, I, I will, I have to say this actually, and he will never say this, but can I tell you that it takes work and dedication and discipline to be able to be in a place of humility to lead people into worship? There are too many people and too many people with a rock star mentality that simply get up because of their gifts. But I had a chance to spend some time with them and Kevin spent an hour yesterday worshiping, practicing, doing all of these different things to be able to prepare for what God was going to do tonight. It does take a special person to be willing to pay the price to lead people to worship. But it also takes people with the right heart not to see it as a performance, but as an opportunity to enter. And what we're seeing right now is that if you're coming in to service, and I felt this, so listen, you know, I don't pull the prophet card very often, you know, I, I'm like, y'all just call me David, right? But I'm pulling the prophet card tonight. And that there are some in here that you have been faithful to come, but you feel the worms on the manna that you're trying to eat. And you feel the bitterness come in where you say, Lord, have you forgotten about me? And I need to address this feeling, this lie that you have experienced. And I need to tell you that it is not because of God's anger at you. It is not because of his impatience with you but it is his desire to have a covenant with you where he says it's time to come forward. Yeah. It's time to move out of old manna. So just yeah. raise your hands up right where you are. Father, in the name of Jesus, I just thank you right now, God, that you give us more than enough for the day that we're in. And Father, sometimes in my, our own desire, our own desire to simply sit in what we've had and what we've experienced, we reject what you're doing now and what you're bringing in the future. Father, right now, we repent. Some of us in here, 
we have been battered by this and we felt the waters of our well go sour. Yes. Father, we repent yes. for having tried to consume what was for yesterday today. Yes. And right now, in the name of Jesus, we let it go. Yes. We let go and we choose to trust you in the future that you have for us in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. So now I know this is a little bit of a tough word and I have like nine jokes I was gonna tell you all, but I'm gonna have to wait for the next time I come through because what you have sensed and what you felt is that you're in a life and death season right now. Yes. And I'm telling you that it is happening all across the body of Christ right now yes. is that people are sensing an urgency of what's getting ready to happen because of the fact that you're getting ready. God is calling an entire generation of those that would believe to say it's time to go from the wilderness to cross the Jordan into Canaan. But here's the thing, this is where the urgency comes in, is God in all compassion and all kindness says that I cannot bring you through if you choose to eat from yesterday's bread. And here's what happens, is that when God presents us with opportunity, if we do not look at it from the right perspective, instead we look at it from the perspective of Egypt, or we look at it from the perspective of the wilderness, we will unconsciously or consciously do what we can to sabotage what God is trying to do because it doesn't fit our idea of how God should move in our life. And can I tell you that that would be one of the greatest tragedies, that we would enter into one of the greatest seasons of revival in this nation and the world. And God stands before us like Moses and says, I'm sorry, son, but you can't go. I'm sorry. And it's not because you failed. It's not because you've sinned. It's not because you've made mistakes. Because God has released his grace for you, for him to cover that and walk you through. But you see, what he cannot do is bring you through if you have a heart that is unwilling to embrace the new thing that he's doing. Because as much as God loves us, as much as he cares for us, he will not sacrifice the destiny of a nation or his bride because one person was not willing to let go. And that's the reality, is that just like a good mother or good father, you can choose to come to Disney World, okay? But you will watch your tone when you get in the car. You will watch your attitude when you get in the car. Why? Because one person's attitude and mindset can affect the entire trip. And so, Father, I pray right now, we do not want to be left behind because we weren't willing to embrace a future that just didn't make sense to us. And Father, we repent right now where we settle in our heart at times to try to resist or even sabotage what you were doing because it was too different than what we had known. And this is not just Egypt. This is the wilderness where there were good things that happened. But Father, no matter it was good or bad, whatever has held us back, we choose to let it go. We make a commitment right now to accept what you want to do with no exceptions, with no resistance, because it's your spirit that's doing it in Jesus' name. Now, this is the important thing that's happening, is that God wants to make sure that you don't get left behind. And I believe that if you are here in this room, what God is doing is he's saying, I'm getting ready to throw a lifeline in the midst of where you are, wherever you are, and I'm ready to pull you through the narrow place. 
because this is what gets what this is what happens is that God is getting ready to vanquish your enemies. Yes. Amen? Amen. God is getting ready to lay siege against those very people and those very situations that have tried to rob you of what was promised to you. And so how do we do this? Is that we have to be willing to become a generation that is not afraid to fight. Yes. We have to be willing to say, God, in the midst of this, I may be going through it, I might be battling, I might be doing all of these different things, drama might be following me everywhere I go, but I refuse to stand and be a victim. I refuse to be passive. I refuse to let other people serve me while I do nothing to fight as well. You see, this is the next thing that I need to encourage you about. Is that how many of you have had that moment where like an amazing prophet or pastor or someone came alongside you when you needed them the most? Has anybody ever experienced that before? You're just like, you're a hot mess. You're a dumpster fire, right? Like I, I know what it is to be a dumpster fire, okay? And then there's that person that comes in and gives you an identity, gives you an understanding of how to hear God's voice. You begin to come alive. You're like Snow White. The birds are singing, right? Bambi's coming out to see you. You know, all of these different things. It's like the sound of music. The hills are alive with the sounds of music. If you knew how to dance through a field of daisies, and if daisies were in Tucson, you would be running through them. There are many of us in this room that we know what it is to have someone come into our life where it felt like we were strengthened, it felt like we became anointed, it felt like we were able to move in a way that we never had before. We began to start having x-ray vision with our eyes, we could see into people's souls, it was awesome, right? We've all been there, woo, it's, it's such a rush. But here's the thing, is that the entire purpose of Jesus coming to die on the cross for you, to begin to restore you to the heart of the Father, is because he wants no one between you and him. Amen. And so while people can come alongside you for a season, there is a moment in time where God comes in and begins to move them out of your life. Even if they are a good thing, even if they're an incredible encouragement to you, they begin to pull their faith that has bolstered you in the last season to pull them away so that you could have an encounter with the one that put them there in the first place. Because the reality is this, is that you were not simply called to receive of a blessing, to receive of your own personal breakthrough. God has called you to be the answer to the prayer of a generation. Yes. Amen. There are those that have come before us that were being preceded us in the city and in this town where they said, Lord, send us someone. Send revival into this city. And God says, I am sending a generation right now and I am anointing them. But what I can't do is I cannot allow them to rely on the faith of others. I need to build the faith within them. And that's why it is felt for some of you like you have been isolated and alone and you weren't able to access God in the same way. It's because God is giving you tools yes. to be able to connect with the Father that is not beholden to man or situation. Because when you stand in the midst of that presence, in the true presence of God, there is nothing that can hold a candle to that divine exchange that happens between you face to face with the Father. Yes. But here's the thing is that sometimes we lean on the manna of yesterday that looks like a man or a woman yes. that may have fed you at one time mm -hmm. but cannot feed you now mm -hmm. because it's time to enter into Canaan. Yeah. And so I want to encourage you tonight you are in the midst of one of the greatest fights of your life. Yeah. And there is literally a battle over the future and the next season of what you're getting ready to step into. And it is a body-wide thing, but it's a personal thing. Yeah. 
And God wanted me to tell you tonight that it does not take fasting 40 days and 40 nights to get through it. It does not necessarily mean that you have to go on a prayer retreat to an Arizona mountain somewhere and just live on the dew of an aloe tree. It is not anything like that. You don't have to do that. God can do it now in an instant. But he needs your heart. That's the only currency he needs right now is your heart and your faith to believe. That you are chosen for this task. Amen. No one else is. Yes. But you have been chosen because now is the time to set the city free. Yes. So I want to invite you to stand up right where you are. And Hammond, if I could get you to uh, just play for, for us for a moment. Father, I just thank you right now. Just, just raise your hands up right where you are. This is a moment in time where God has been shaking things in so many of us. He's been shaking us in ways that has felt so personal, in ways that has felt almost like, Lord, I feel like I'm more alone than I ever have been. I feel like I, I've, I've walked into a territory and a season that I do not understand. And God would say to you, son or daughter, I did not bring you into the wilderness for you to die. I brought you into this season because I need to make you into a champion. Yes. I need to make you into something that I called for you to be a long time ago, but I said, this is the moment, this is the season for this to happen. And the Lord would say that sons and daughters that you in this season have put aside the manna of the past season. You have chosen tonight to say, I will not try to prepare for tomorrow what God has reserved for today. I refuse to look to the past to feed me today. And because of that, Father, I choose to say yes. Just tonight, in your, in your own heart, just say yes. If that's you, if you're saying, God, I'm tired of this. I'm tired of coming up for reasons why I'm not getting breakthrough. I'm tired for blaming people for why I haven't been able to flourish where you've planted me. I'm weary of giving other people the power over what you're doing in my life today. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, your presence has been here the whole time. But I ask that you open our awareness, even now, of what you're doing inside of us. Some of you right now, there's, a, there's almost like a cracking going on on the inside of you, a little bit of a stirring in you, it's like you're about to, you know, like those roller coasters where you're about to go over the edge. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray that that's your presence, that's your spirit that's moving on them. Pulling them through the narrow place. Father, we receive it now. We receive that supernatural grace. In Jesus' name. And Father, we shake off the residue. We shake off all of that stuff, all of that baggage, all of those things that have tried to hold us back in the last season, we shake it off now in the name of Jesus. Come on, some of you got to physically shake yourselves. You got to just take a, a physical move, an act of faith, and just shake your shoulders and your arms because God is telling you right now that you mean that much to him, for him to bring his very presence to come save you. So, Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, I ask that you do it. My friend right over here, I remember you. I just heard the Lord say a couple of things for you that I just wanted to add to what, what was said. Is The Lord says that the relationships that have gone into turmoil, God says that he is in the midst of it because he needs to break the greatest outcome. But the thing was that some of the adversities he felt has actually just simply revealed a lot of what was already there. And one of the things that has been challenged is you said, Lord, I'm loyal to the dead. I'm loyal all the way to the dead. And I don't know if I'm ready to let go. And God says that if you will allow him to guide you through the emotional and relational shaking that's going on, what he'll do is he'll put not only peace in your heart, but he'll show you that the benefit and the blessing is not just for you, but it's 
for those that you led, say, God, I'll let you handle it. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you right now that, that this amazing woman has been in a, a season where there has been so many things that's been pulling at her, so many things that have been trying to rob her of her peace. And Father, I say right now that your voice would come in the midst of where she is. And that you guide her, Father, in the name of Jesus. And right here, Jesus is popping one up. I, I just told me your name. <coughs> Denise? I saw a few things. The first one was this, is that it's time to allow God to begin to bring new opportunities when it comes to your finances and your resources. And the reason why this is important is because the enemy has literally come in five different directions to try to rob you of the resources that you need to make you feel almost like you're going to feel like I'm boxed in. But God wanted me to tell you that in this season, if you'll ask him, one of the greatest faith journeys that you're going to walk through is God beginning to provide for you in a way that begins to shatter that assignment of the enemy that tried to rob you and your whole family. And the Lord says that he's going to begin to cause an abundance to flow and it's going to open up the room for more vision. So Father, just bless her now in Jesus' name. And for this gentleman right over here, I heard the Lord saying that you have been that one that has had to navigate and move away from people that wanted to control you in a negative way. And one of the things that has been very hard for you is that you said, Lord, I feel like I have to make a choice to move forward, but I do not have the support that I thought that I had. And God wanted me to tell you that, son, even as you walked away from family, you walked away from friends, you walked away from people that you thought would always be in your life, the Lord says that I'm going to begin to restore to you in this season something greater than what you have to sacrifice. And the Lord says, you are a trailblazer, you're a pioneer, and I'm going to begin to show that you are actually a Joseph in the making that is going to help restore your family and those you love through an understanding of God's promise in your life. Father, we release it now in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Just raise your hands up just right now. I, I just felt like what we got to do tonight is that we have to recalibrate. We have to recalibrate. And we cannot allow what has been before or what we think will be in the future to rob us of the fact that God's presence is here right now. And I just saw for you right here with, um, I like your hand wear, that's really cool. Um, tell me your name. Blanca. 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 The Lord says that I have heard your prayers and the Lord says that you will not be the only one that walks through the narrow ways. God wanted me to tell you that he is moving in the midst of those that you have cried out for. And God says, even though you had to pioneer some things, the Lord says, watch and see what I will do to bring those that you love into kingdom with you, into a place of inheritance. Father, we release that now over her life in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. My friend right over here, um, I just heard the Lord say for you three things. The first one is the Lord says that your time where you're planted is getting ready to come to a close. But your question has always been, Lord, I don't want to move ahead of you, and I don't want to move behind you. And it is the paralysis of analysis that has made you feel like you're not able to move forward. But God wanted me to give you this encouragement that he is going to speak very clearly to you when it's time to move forward. But what he needs to do in this season is he needs to bring your inheritance to you. You will not leave anything behind that's not supposed to be left behind. God wants to give you the fullness of what he has for you in this season so that you can go forward the last God, we just thank you right now for this amazing woman, Father. I just thank you that right now she has felt like stuck where she's like, Lord, I don't know where I'm supposed to go. I'm not sure how I'm supposed to transition. Father, I thank you right now that you will give her the timing at the right moment, at the right season, in Jesus' name. Well, just raise your hands up high right now. I'm telling you, what I'm going to pray tonight is that God would begin to continue this journey and this conversation with you. Lord, show us. Give us a vision. Right now, we just ask. Father, give us a vision. 
of what we need to do in order to step through the narrow place to step into Canaan. Father, in Jesus' name. Now, I want to tell you this. And I don't have time to get into it right now. But I want to tell you this. That if you allow God to show you his goodness and his mercy in this season, it'll prepare you for what's getting ready to come. Because you know what's interesting? Is when the Israelites crossed the Jordan River into Canaan, it was an amazing miracle. <laughs> but you know what stood right in front of them? A small town by the name of Jericho. So God says, I'm building you into a warrior. I'm building you into a fighter. And now is the time where it begins. So, Father, right now, for the millionth time, we raise our hands up tonight. And God, I say right now that for those that have a desire to, your grace is here to anoint us, to train us how to be able to become a warrior, a champion, and a fighter. So, Father, right now, for those that are willing, we say yes. We say do whatever it takes inside of us so that we can become the answer. That we will not simply sit back and receive, but, Father, we will be apprehended with a passion to give. So, Father, we release that now. We believe it now in the name of Jesus. If you believe it, say amen. Amen, amen and amen. Well, give someone a high five as you're seated. I'm going to tell you the truth. I'll be back in a few weeks, but I, I need to do a little bit of housekeeping, okay? How many of you heard the announcements about Prophet John coming the next two Thursdays? Amen? Now, here's, here's what I want to do. Can I come to you as David, as, as cousin David, okay? Or, or nephew David, can I come to you with this one encouragement? Is to approach what God is saying in these next few services different. And I understand that there is a level of familiarity that we have because we, we have been exposed to amazing prophetic encounters and all of this stuff. But I have to encourage you that how we approach the anointing is very, very important. And God is still the God, is the same God that occupied the Ark of the Covenant. Yes. So our approach cannot be casual. It cannot be lackadaisical. We have to come to our meetings with the anticipation that God is going to move. Yes. With the desire that God is going to move. Yes. And you know, God can use anyone. I understand that. But can I tell you that you have a pastor in this church that travels 365 all over the world. People call him because they want him to help them usher revival into their ministry. And over the last few months, revival has been breaking out wherever they have been going. There has been a passion and a hunger. But let me ask you this. Why is it not happening in Tucson? It has everything to do with how we approach the anointing. So I want to encourage you. Next Thursday, you come. Come expecting. Come with anticipation. And a holy awe that, God, you're taking us to net where we've never been before. And we're going to receive this. So let me bless you. Father, I just thank you so much for this amazing service, which you've been doing inside of your people. Father, I thank you that regardless of the adversity, you are moving in your people, even if we haven't seen it before. So, Father, I bless your people now. I say right now that they're going to be the head and not the tail. I say right now that they're going to have the word of the Lord in their mouth. We charge them now to begin to go into their season, to go into their life, into their career, their nine to five. Father, I say say right now that your presence will go with them and surround them where they are. And Father, we bless them now. If you believe it and say that's me, say amen. 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 I'll see you guys soon. All right.